Clayton wants to know, how do you push your team beyond their best? Clayton, great question. Way to start off 2015. Good questions. Uh, for, oh, actually, I picked this one, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> who knows who Barry Horowitz is? <laughs> but that was so subconscious, too. It was a good question. I thought we should do it. Um, I really, really, really think that the best way to push somebody above their own means is to guilt them into it. And I know that's a weird kind of answer, but it is my honest belief that the thing that drives, first of all, everybody's driven by different things. So the real answer to your question is to use your ear, right? D-Rock, zoom in to my ear, right? You know, the ear is the key in this scenario because the truth is the way to push somebody above their limits is to actually have individual conversations with them about what is their holy you know, grail, right? Like what do they want to accomplish? Like India and I, I, I like I have a good feel of some of India's long term career ambitions. And like that gives me first of all, her knowing that we've even had that conversation in and itself gives her a little bit more confidence to work harder because she's trying to get what she wants out of it professionally and knowing that I'm the person that could most likely make that happen, at least in the context of this world, that just even having the conversation puts her in a better spot. Um, but some people are, are literally rawly driven by straight cash. Like truly, like, like you wanna push somebody? Like you carrot, like hey, I know you love cash, I'll give you 10,000 more if you like, you know like, and so you've gotta find out what makes people tick. I'm so not motivated by cash that so many people try to get me to do things, JV with me, invest in things, uh, do things, speak at things, because they, and they think cash is the, the, the way to do it. And listen, I love the cash, um, but it's not my biggest driver and I make a lot of decisions based on legacy, um, long-term impact, uh, on myself, by the way, not like long-term global impact. You know, uh, you know that's not, not how I, I think. I mean, I think there's a byproduct of that, but that's not the number one thing for me. But to answer the question in a general form, I truly do believe the best way to get that is to guilt. And what I mean by guilt, it's a variation of listening, which is not only listening, but delivering in a world where so few people even begin to listen, let alone delivering on that listening. And once you start doing that, people start realizing, let me tell you what's happening at Vayner, it's not super confusing. I know exactly what's going on in this company. It's starting to get old enough that there's enough things happening for enough people that it's really easy to point to Phil Toronto or to somebody else and be like, wait a minute, or Steve Unwin. Like you can start pointing to, oh crap, that person wanted that, that person's getting that, that person's happy as crap, I want that. And so it's listening and then delivering which then creates a scenario where people want to over deliver because the only way somebody will over deliver for you, because you asked a very selfish question, how can I get my team to over deliver for me? For my thing, it's very simple. The best way to get them to over deliver, John? I have Jack, if that's a substitute. No, Jack is not a substitute. Okay. I know where you're thinking, but okay. like, no, that is not a substitute. Okay. We're, we're on the hunt. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the only way to get somebody to over deliver is to attack their own selfishness, theirs. You're selfish because you want more out of your team to help you. Well, the best way to get that to happen is to over-deliver against their selfishness. I do believe that guilt is a huge driver because it, there's something that I, I believe in human beings. I mean, some people don't have self-awareness or empathy or these emotional feelings, but so many people, like, it's amazing to me now living 20 years professionally, like, how many people are not confused eventually. They may be emotional at the time you fire them or not reward them, but boy, every time I run into somebody four, seven, nine years down the line, I've had a very good track record of them saying, yeah, I know why you did that, or I mean like crazy stuff, like I had a drug problem. I mean like there was like, you know, stuff, life, right? So I would answer your question uh, like I have before on this show, and if you haven't heard me say it, I'll say it again. The single best way to win is to give 51% of the relationship if there was a jury of 500 people that they would all agree that you've given 51% to the relationship and you have to be good enough to know what to do with the other 49. So I would attack their own selfishness, I would make it so good for them that you've guilted them in delivering and be very prepared in your stomach by making it awesome and them under delivering, still being entitled to think they did deliver and then you being disappointed 
You listen to the Gary Vee show and he told you and he's so great, at least you think so, thank you very much, and you did it, and then all four of these people who you gave $10,000 raises to yesterday, a month later, are doing the same crap they did and it didn't motivate them at all. Or you gave them four weeks off instead of one week off and they're still just as crappy. Or you like got them a babysitter and you pay for it and they still aren't. Gratitude and all these wonderful human characteristics are not guaranteed, but the best way for you to have it happen is to consistently keep trying to do it for that person and then, look, I just had a meeting with all these characters, right, and but the rest of the team, and I was like, look, like you may not win on this team. Like 2015, I want to take it up another notch and the consolation prize is you get to work for one of the best companies in the world, but like you just might not be able to be on this team. Like you've got to be upfront, you've got to be fair, you gotta know when you're setting up people for victory and when not, and you gotta do that, and then you get to judge, not beforehand. Way too many of you are making the mistake yourself. You didn't train, you didn't put the person in a position to succeed, you're not communicating properly on what you expect, you're not shooting it straight, you're scared to hurt feelings, you're too much of a dick. It could be a million different reasons why it's not happening, but it is always going to be the greatest form of meritocracy that you can create, and it starts with your ear and it, and, it, and it finishes, in my opinion, on a second step move of you actually delivering on that. Call people's bluffs. I live life on calling people's bluffs. Oh, you'll really crush it if you have another person? Here, now, you have to be good enough, back to that 49%, to afford to give somebody that person, right? You may not have that situation, but you might have to make a decision. One of the quickest ways I grew Wine Library was by making $30,000 a year for five years in a row because I took all those monies and I called people's bluffs. And when they let me down, do you think it hurt my feelings that I wasn't making 45 instead of 30? It sure did. But did I have my eye on the big prize? I sure did. Now I get to pay double that salary to speak for one hour because I built long term because I was 23 years old, right? You gotta know where you're at. If you're 83 and you're watching the show, first of all, big ups, old dog. And second of all, <laughs> second of all, you know, maybe you don't need to play the long game and invest as much. Maybe it's time to cash out. I have these weird feelings that in my 80s I'm gonna be rogue as crap and just like take because I just gave for so long. I don't know. You've heard me say that that's my concern, but I can tell you this. <sighs> Most of the reasons, let me phrase, if they work for you, all of the reasons that they're not over delivering against their best, all of those reasons are your fault. Oh crap, wait, subscribe! <laughs> I need subscriptions because I can't push this many right hooks in social, so subscribe!